Drawing guides allow us to draw things like mosaics, mirrored images, and perspective grids with ease. Let's go ahead and open up the drawing guides window. Drawing guides are kind of a hidden gem here in Procreate. And when I say hidden, I mean, they're actually kind of hard to find. So let me show you where it's at and then we'll talk about how to use them. So in the top left here at the actions tab, you go ahead and tap on that and then go over to canvas and then down to drawing guide. And you can just toggle that on and off. And automatically it's going to default you on the very first guide, which is the 2D guide but maybe I want to manipulate that specific one or edit this or change it to a different type of guide. I can go down to edit drawing guide right below it and it opens up our drawing guides interface. Now this interface is pretty simple. So let me just quickly navigate you around here so that you know where things are and then we'll go through each individual type of guide. So at the very first, you can cancel out of this in the top right or hit done when you want to apply your changes. But this little bar up here, this little rainbow colored bar, it looks almost just like a decorative thing because it almost fits in with the branding of Procreate. But if you tap on it, you can actually see that it's just a color scale. So you can adjust the color of your guides, which could come in handy depending on the color of your background. So if you want them to be more or less visible, you can go ahead and slide that and adjust it. Not just a decorative piece, it's actually functional. Down here at the bottom, you'll notice like it says 2D grid, isometric, perspective, and symmetry. We're going to walk through each of those, but first you're going to notice underneath each of them, as I kind of tap through them, they have very similar adjustment scales and things that you can work with. And so each of those, we're going to kind of talk about like this opacity slider. That's pretty straightforward. Changes the opacity of that grid line or the thickness of your lines or the grid size here in this 2D grid. You can also go in and interact with things on the grid itself. So for example, this little blue node right in the middle, let's tap and drag it around a little bit so you can move the grid around. Then you'll notice that this little green one down here as well. By tapping on it, you can rotate your grid. So whatever you need to do for your project, you can kind of do it ahead of time here. And then if you want to reset that, just go ahead and tap and reset. All right, so now let's go see how it works in our project. But before we go there, make sure in the bottom right hand corner to tap on assisted drawing and you'll understand why here in a second. We like what we did here. Let's go ahead and hit done in the top right. And now it's applied to our canvas. So let's look at our layers because it does something specific to our layers. So the layer that you already have selected, it's going to automatically add that assisted draw to it, which means it's going to use the 2D grid as kind of like a ruler for you. Typically when I'm drawing, if I try to draw a straight line without using any sort of quick shapes, I couldn't draw a perfect straight line. But in here, I can draw a perfectly straight line, vertical or horizontal. I can't really do a diagonal because it's just picking up nearest to these lines and allowing me just to draw perfect ones. Now, maybe I don't want perfect lines or maybe I want to kind of toggle between both of them. That's fine too. And you can even keep the grid here. Let's go over to our layers and let's just create a new layer. Now, when I'm on this layer, you'll notice that I can just freely draw wherever I want. I'm not having to adhere to the 2D grid. I can draw right over it. So not every layer is going to automatically have that ruler setting there, which is your drawing assist. But if you want another layer to be assisted as well, you just tap on your layer and hit drawing assist. It's a pretty neat function here and you can toggle them on and off. If maybe for just a second, you wanna be able just to kind of go crazy, but you wanna be on this one layer, then you can turn that off, but then you can turn it back on over here and hit drawing assist. So that's kind of typically how you'll work with assisted drawing. And you'll notice over here when we go to our actions tab, if you want to turn it off, you can do that. So it'll actually still work. It just removes the visuals. So you don't have that grid overlaid. I typically do that when I'm working in the symmetry tool, which we'll talk about here in a second. So that's basically how you would interact there with one of these guides turned on and drawing assist. Our next guide is the isometric guide. So let's go ahead and turn that one on. Let's go back to our actions, canvas, then drawing guide, and then edit that drawing guide. And at the bottom, we have our options for the different guides. Let's turn on isometric. Now you'll notice that the sliders are exactly the same as the previous one. So I do want to make the grid size a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit clearer there. I'm going to make sure that drawing assist is on and I'm going to hit done. So if you're not familiar with the isometric grid, 
It's mainly for like more technical drawings. A lot of times engineers use them, architects use them, and it's a way to show things in a three dimensional space. So for example, you know, instead of just drawing a side view of a building where you just see a rectangle of like a high rise, you can go ahead and easily draw that in 3D. because this is acting again as rulers. So no matter where I you know, make my marks, it's gonna follow those lines, unless I turn off assisted, which I'm gonna keep it on right now. So then if I wanna have another building right next to it, a little shorter building. And then if I need to break that grid again, go ahead and turn off the drawing assist and maybe I just wanna make my own and that's totally fine too. Or I need to adjust that grid, you know, I need a smaller grid, I can go back and I can edit that drawing again and I can change the grid now, go back. And now when I'm drawing on it, if I make sure it's assisted, now it'll fit on a much smaller grid and I can work on other fine details. That's how I would use the isometric grid. I don't use it a whole lot because it's not the type of art that I do, but some of you might find this super, super helpful. All right, let's jump into the next one, perspective guide. So before we start, let's go ahead and just jump up here and clear this layer. We wanna get rid of that art and then we'll go back to our actions, edit drawing guides, and let's go over to perspective. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that there's nothing on here. It's completely blank. And that's because you have to tap anywhere to add your own vanishing point. So if you're not familiar with like one point perspective, two and three point perspective, that may be something you wanna look up. But if it is something you're familiar with, then you're gonna be like, yes, I'm so happy that this is here. It's gonna save you so much time. You can also do, again, you can add another vanishing point. You got your horizon line is that horizontal blue line right there. And you can add up to three. And then it's the same thing at the very bottom. You have your opacity thickness and then assisted drawing. And then you can go through there and draw your crazy backgrounds and landscapes and super technical drawings. That's not my style. So I'll let you guys do that and explore that one a little bit further. So now we are on to the next one. I know I probably shouldn't pick favorites, but symmetry guide is my favorite. It is so cool. It saves you a lot of time, but also it's just really, really fun to play with. So again, let's clear this layer. Let's tap on it and clear or use your finger gestures that we learned. Also, uh, we're gonna go back to edit drawing guide and just move over here to symmetry. And we actually have more than one option here with symmetry. If you go down to the options button, you'll see that you have horizontal, you have quadrant and radial. Some really fun things, let me walk you through them. Vertical is one that I use most of the time just because I like to have the ability to mirror one side. So let's just jump right into it. So if I'm gonna be drawing like a leaf and I wanna draw it perfectly symmetrical, I can do that here. You get the idea, you were able to mirror it. And again, we can always just turn that off if you wanna add any other details. And so maybe I wanna add like a few little dots here and there. Really, really neat, can save you a ton of time, especially if you're doing like faces or things like that. I find this tool extremely helpful. I'm gonna clear this again, and now we're gonna go back in the drawing guide and see what other options we have. So horizontal, I think that speaks for itself. It's the exact same thing, just horizontal. Quadrant is awesome too, because you can go through, let's hit done. And I can go ahead. Oh, I gotta make sure drawing assist is on. Always make sure your drawing assist is on if you wanna use that. <laughs> so now I can go through and make my shapes and it just mirrors them in a quadrant shape. We're gonna get rid of this. Let's go to the drawing guides. And we'll do radial. Now you have the option here to change the way that it rotates the image. And I'll show you that here in a second. So let's do the radial. This is like, if you're gonna draw some sort of mosaic, you could draw an awesome snowflake. But you also, if you wanna have it change the way that, that it mirrors those, you change it to rotational symmetry. So now we go over here and let's check out what it's doing. So now it doesn't mirror it from between this one. So if I was to draw an arrow here, it's showing you the direction it's going. Now I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's go back and turn off rotational symmetry. I'm gonna draw those same arrow and notice how it points to each other. So it can make it go kind of follow each other and it just changes the shape, which is kind of neat when you're making different mosaics and things like that. You have lots of different options, but 
it's just a really neat tool. And again, all of these tools, all of these guides are kind of hidden, but they're like one of my favorite things to use. And hopefully you're able to use these in your next project. Up to this point, we've been making our own visuals. Now let's bring in some photos and some text.